the chances of a kid like you growing up here, yeah, if you'd have told him there and then you're going to be fighting in Vegas and all that, he'd have believed you, but the hard fella telling him probably wouldn't. No, I'll be honest, lad, loads of people laughed at me, because as I say, I believe in myself more than I've ever met anyone. I don't even know why, lad. I think I was just born with it. What's happening? We're in the studio. I just know I love it when we're in the studio, the better than the zoo ones. But first and foremost, you know the score. You don't have to watch it on YouTube. You can watch it on all the other things, Apple Music, Spotify, listen to it on that. Give it a five stars and all that shite. You know the score. And if you want any new body gear, get onto the Apex website for all your new latest stuff. But today... Got a Scouse legend in the house. I've already had one of his family members on the podcast as well ages ago. So introduce yourself, Paul. Paul Smith, um, eldest of the four Smith brothers, probably what we're known for now, isn't it? In the boxing, <laughs> the owl fella, um, not me, Ta. And um, I'm happy to be here, mate. Thanks for having me. The one that paved the way, lad, for the rest of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? See, just being the eldest, I've, I've heard that a few times. You're like, oh, did the, you, you did this, but... If I'd have gone into footy, which I was shite at, they'd have followed <laughs> anyway. Our, our Liam's the, the footballer out of us, sport Billy. He's um, he's good at everything, isn't he? But uh, it was always going to be boxing with us. We always grew up around like the Rocky films and boxing magazines around the house. Like, my dad loved boxing. We always had the good fights on the telly and watching Tyson when I was a kid and I idolised him. So it was never really going to be anything different. And then younger brothers being younger brothers just follow. And, yeah. and they follow down the gym, which, as you know yourself, Combat gyms, boxing gyms, kickboxing, karate and all that. It's not good for the kids, is it? Yeah, it's not on book good. But as you say there, Liam did tell me that when he was on. He was like, I want to be a footy player, lad. I didn't yeah. start it later. So how old, is you, as well. how old is you when you started boxing? I, I went round at nine. But back then you couldn't box until you were 11. And um, it was doing me, I didn't not, not being able to fight. I was sparring and, and, and then it was always that sort of lore of... of like that little pull what your mates your mates are going to do this and that and yeah. you've got to go that way. And I used to always have a little thing in my head when I was a kid that I want to just get home, have me dinner or my tea early, like the lads do, and then go out and play. And yeah. I could never do it. I used to have to go to the gym and then come back and then eat after the gym. But obviously it, it worked. The, the, the gamble pays off because I ended up doing what I wanted to do. But little things like that when you're a kid, I jibbed it at nine, went back at 10 and, and trained and then boxed at 11. My first fight was 11 and you could only be 11, but I had my first fight in um, 40 year junior, um, year six, I think it is. Yeah, now. year six, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's mad when you say 40 year junior, lad. Showing your age yeah. there, lad. Showing your junior, age. 50 year senior. <laughs> I, I, um, he, took, he took me lad round to walk around today in, in a school in a sixth form for because um, for, he's finishing this year, he's doing his exams. And like, they're saying, oh, they're all saying year 12. Like, yeah. But, like, it stops at 11 I'm old school I'm, I'm yeah. yeah we are fella says it to me when he used to say like oh year 5 year 6 and then he go what what, yeah. what, what year is that like first second third and I'm just like what do you mean that's like it's got <laughs> a seven, number eight. now dad you know what I, I mean I, I debate with me lad now about like the boxing and where he is and I was I, I like weight when yeah. we talking about weight and size and I said I think I was like I think I was three key heavier than you I was the next weight but I was in like third year senior and he's like, what are you on about that? I'm like, oh, well, you're, in, you're in 40 and now, he's going, oh, you're 50 and now, he's going, no, I'm year 11. I'm like, just it, the numbers are different. Yeah, that is 50 it started though, when it? I was in school, but we we still, we were probably the last group that called it by the years, yeah. Yeah, well, so you had like your first boxing match at 11. 11, yeah. See, I'd never even walked into a gym yet at that yeah. point. It, it, it was like, at that time, boxing especially, was like more traditional in a sense that Kids that would have walked in at 17 probably wouldn't have done nothing. Whereas now everything's changed completely. I don't yeah. know whether it's physiologically, I don't know whether it's because kids are naturally bigger and older for their age at the, at the time. Not nowadays anyway, I, I, it's a fact. It's not that I think it. I don't know whether it's down to that or whether kids have just got more access to... If I wanted to watch boxing fights when I was a kid, it was a VHS and it was yeah. our, like Mike Tyson's greatest hits. That was the most worn out video in the house or <laughs> the Fabulous Four with Leonard, Gillan, Agler and Ains. Yes. It was just boxing videos. Now a kid can click on the computer and he's got any fight of any style in front of him. So you can learn yourself as as such as well as going in the gym and being taught by a coach. But nowadays, as you say, like Anthony Joshua didn't walk into, he was probably 17, 18. Tom Stalker, I was with him the other day, we were talking about it. He, he was watching Ah, uh, Stephen in the Commonwealth Games, and four years later, he's in the he's in the Commonwealth Games himself. That's some going to be able yeah. to start something lately. Like, like like you said, you've done yourself. You As you say, late. Though, with Anthony Joshua, he's just a physical specimen. Yeah. If he was born in America, he'd be playing NFL. NFL. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's why he's probably the numbers in boxing and 
maybe UFC or, or, or combat sports in general are lower than what they used to be because the lot of and the, the pull of the NFL with the money and, and the fact that you can have such a short career but make so much and do so well in it. It's um it's some sport like but it's not for me. I don't no, think same. I don't understand too boring, it. Yeah. But as you say, especially with heavyweights, I think that well, especially in MMA, it might be the same in boxing. That's why the heavyweight divisions are so thin. Because they can go on especially in America, they can go and do NFL yeah. and earn a hundred times the amount of money what they can earn boxing. Safer. And literally well, hopefully safer, yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's safer, know, like from, the, amount, the, um, the amount the, of the egg clashes and that they have, yeah. but they can earn so much more money and they, they only play for like three months a year, don't they? Yeah, yeah, and, and the games like that 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 much stop start as well. I think if you add up all the playing time in an actual game, we were talking about it it's a, about a while ago. It's not, yeah, it's like not that, that long, it? yeah, actually, with all the yeah. stops and that. Yeah. I and I'll be honest, I had my mate Blaze from Philadelphia, lad, he's a Philly Eagles fan, and he came to ours and put a game on, and I was just like, "Lad, what is going on?" That's here? probably why. That's why, like, they have that much half time entertainment, that much food. You can go and get, you can get a full scram yeah. and, a, and a bevy or, or, or a soft drink and, and sit back in your chair, watch it, and you've missed nothing. <laughs> and you sit and eat the full scram, and the next bit of play will come, and then you get bored again. So you probably go out and eat even more and all the more, or people like me and you might not with the appetite. Yeah, I you've definitely got. would. But, but that's probably why it's the way it is because it's that much stop start. But it's massive over there, isn't it? Yeah, the all States. the American sports I think are made for that. They're made for adverts. Yeah, yeah. basketball, timeouts, yeah. baseball. Like we've been to a few baseball games. The Padres belt it. It's boss going to a baseball game. Like I'd find that more entertaining than an NFL game. Yeah. I think. But even there, lad, where you're sitting in that. There's people just coming around asking you, do you want drinks and do you want food yeah. constantly? Yeah. Like it is, it's, they're all their sports are made for like stop start. I think they're just made for commercials. I'd, I'd be f***ed if I lived in America, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, I'm sad <laughs> enough over here, just just want to retire. But if I lived over there, just if it wasn't LA where, where it's quite healthy, the, the other places, it's just convenient oh, and like easy and it's to eat, to eat so bad. I'll be honest, lad, as you say, California's like the healthiest state. But I still get gargantuan in San Diego, lad. <laughs> I get massive in San Diego. And there is a lot of healthy food options, yeah. but I, I don't want them. We you know always I mean? we always go and, and every time we go to LA, um in and out burger. Just straight. Oh, you, lad. you've got to get Isn't one it while the you're there. I mean, it's the best burger I've ever had in my life. Told you. I've already in told you. In and out is the heaviest burger. Yeah. Do you get the four by four? I used to always get two double doubles, animal fries, and a strawberry milkshake. I go that's, four that's by four, me. Next, someone told me though, you don't just have to get four by four. If you want, you can say six by six. Can you? Yeah. So next time, I want to try the six by six. Definitely, I, I, I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to. It's mad though, isn't it? Because certain parts in America, you go like it's, it's West Coast, West only, Coast really. in and out. It, it's um, it's Arizona. It, get on me, no one every location. <laughs> this just says it all, doesn't it? It's Arizona. California and um, I think it's Utah or somewhere else yeah, where it starts. There's a, there's a I'll few. take the piss out of me over, over it. I, I literally just got up the ring. I'd just been finished getting stitched up. I just lost to Andre Ward and I got stopped. He broke my nose in the night round. First time in life, my nose ever broke. And um, I got toweled in the, in the night round. And I had one around. It's Andre Ward. He's, he's the, f the, yeah. the best and he's unbelievable. It was a, you'll understand it because you're a fight. It was a weird sort of privilege being in the ring with him. And it's yeah. a story that I'll tell my grandkids, I'm sure, because he, he never lost a fight from when he was 15 till the day he finished, he still hasn't. But as soon as I got the ring, I remember just thinking, I had to wait up, I would got the weight completely wrong. And um, I remember just thinking, I just, I, I, I just, let's get to it and I'll beg as quick as you can. <laughs> Last day, he takes the piss out of me. He said, you still, still had the needle, the plastic surgeon was stitching me. I still had the needle in my eye and I'm going, we're going to it and I'll beg And like, they're just standing thinking, Paul. but just that's what I'm like though go. I'll be honest lad like after my last fight in London like when I won come in the back I jumped in the shower Stormzy come in the back to see us and I just turned to Ellis and went do a joint lad knock a joint up and then as he was doing that Tom's fight finished so we had to wait for Tom's fight to finish so I was planning on going out to fire exit and whiffing that but <laughs> I couldn't because because Tom's fight finished so early the press conference that he wanted us in the press conference straight away. So went there and lad the German Donna was just there waiting for me, weren't it? Lad, <laughs> they're all right, aren't they? The German Donna. I've seen them sponsoring a few boxes as well, you know. Lad, and it, it's, they're heavy. It, it's a bad, it's a bad link up because it's the easiest thing in the it's world. A bad After link you fight, it's just there's all your German Donnas, what you've been lad, missing, that, loads of K on the table. Like, that is one thing that I haven't found in America though. Like 
Kebabs, all meat, yeah. decent kebabs, ton of meat, you know what I mean? It's an acquired That's, taste to be yeah, fair. Yeah, anyone who knows where I can get some decent ton of meat in America, let me know. Because <laughs> lad, that gym and Donna is power. Yeah. Like, we go now and then after the gym, the lads will go there one, once every couple of weeks or something, we'll, we'll go there and um, it's K-Cals all around, that's what all the lads get. The, um, like 500 and something calories in, in one. That's yeah. Decent. It's boss, like, food, boss food show this in it yeah you know that <laughs> boss food yeah go on let's get back to boxing then and just so obviously had you started boxing young age but how, how did your amateur like career go yeah, but, well you know it was it was not bad i won um won two schoolboy titles i remember winning the first that was the first one out of the tundra for about nine or ten years we had a bit of a drought and um i was buzzing winning them but the, the first year of winning them i lost in the notice final so it's it's messy side Cheshire semis or final or, or, or quarters if there's a, if there's enough kids not West final national quarters national semis national final yeah we're not you're national champion usually six or seven fights if if you get one in in um, in your in your division a lot of kids get buys so the first year I got a bite and not was final and I lost to this kid on points and he got the final I remember just thinking if he can get there I, I should have beat him yeah if he can get there I can definitely do it and that's what that's where like cities in the country at the moment. Years ago with Naz and Naz Sheffield was flying. Naz, Ryan Rhodes, or Johnny Nelson, all them coming through. And then they go on a bit of a drought. Now they're starting to pick back up again. I don't even know that. I remember that because I was commentating there a couple of weeks ago. Liverpool was all right in early on. And then we had like the Neri Oligan and that. And, it come up, and then it went down on a low again and it started coming. And now it's at the biggest it's, it's ever been. Yeah. But it's hard to explain with your sport, with the, with, with the boxing. Because yours is, is relatively new compared yeah. to what boxing is. But oh, with the so boxing... New. If you see someone do it, you can do it. And kids are watching you now in this city and all over the country and all over the world and they think, well, I can I can do that. He's, he's from by ours. Or he only went to high school. And they think, if they can do it, I can do it. And some of them probably will. Some of them hopefully will. But we dad sort of no one. I won my first school with title. Then I got another one a couple of years later. And then... Um, Two schoolboys, two junior ABAs, senior ABA, and then I got picked for Commonwealth, which I was made up with after winning ABAs. And I got a silver in them. I lost to them. How old was you there when you were 19. I lost to them, John Pascal in the final in the MEN. Um, I broke my thumb the, the day before. And it was either take the silver or go and fight. And, and again, he was another one of them. Like He was a top amateur. Yeah. But the best on their team. And I remember, obviously, you've got that same weird thing where you think, oh, I want to have a go with that. Yeah. That, that fight, I wanted to fight him. I wanted to you box You want him. the gold no matter what. You, Even if you're injured, you're going into the fight, aren't you? They always say that on them. That, like one of the only fights my mom went to watch me fight. She watched me in um, St. George's on a dinner show when I was 15. And it was at uh, Northwest Counties against Canada. And I knocked the kids out in the first round. And my mom's on the toilet, like feeling sick. And then someone said, look, it, it, it wasn't your lad. Your lad won. My ma just dated this. She was like, no, that's some poor, some poor mother's son in Canada. And that's all, like, she, she never went back. But that one, she came to watch me get my medal. And she literally, as my name was getting called out, waved and then walked out the arena. <laughs> I had the fight and then she came in after the fight. She couldn't watch. But every single silver medalist on the podium will all either have tears in their eyes or be pissed off because they've just lost the fight. Yeah. The bronzes will be all right because they've had the day to recover. And the gold's obviously made up. You'll always see the silver medalist gutters on the, on the podium, which I was because you want to win it. And then, after that, I was going to hopefully try and go to the Olympics. But they got rid of 71 key. You had to go down to 69, which I was too big for, or up to 75, which I probably wasn't big enough for yeah. at the time. So, um, it's mad they just get prop. rid of weights. They did it to let the first weight limit for females in that year. So in the Olympics, you could only get, I think it was 12 weights or something. That's well, that's mad. And women say had that. to have one, so they got rid of the middle one. It's a, That was a blessing in disguise for Molly. Because when Molly was looking to go into boxing and be like an amateur in the Olympics, her weight never got, got yeah. put on there. So yeah. she obviously ended up stopping and ended That's up it. eventually coming down. But then to the next weight. one, they, they, they changed the weights again. They were allowed two weights for the women or three weights for the women and it's gone from strength to strength since then. And rightly so, you know what I mean? There's, we're getting to the stage in boxing now and it's not in sexes whatsoever. You, you'll know the same with, with MMA. There's, there's, there's some unbelievable fighters in, in MMA and in boxing where you're not saying she's good for a woman no more. You're saying she's a good oh, fighter, yeah. full stop. She beats half the men. Yeah. And that that's the case yeah. at the moment now with Katie Taylor, Tasha Jones, all, all the champions out there. Cressy Shields was unbelievable. Savannah Mars is a brilliant fighter, but they beat half the men in the weight yeah. limits. And, and um, Shields was calling them all out. And she, she was on there giving everyone loads on, on <laughs> she's Twitter. She's on the bend there, she, lad, she, she is on the bend. It's a great fight as well. But yeah, so the amateur game, 
loved it and I was going to go to the Olympics, but they got rid of me weight. I was, no, I wasn't going to go. I was going to go to qualifiers and try yeah. and qualify. And by no means that would have been a, a foregone conclusion. It was it, it, very, very tough to qualify for the Olympics. And um, none of us ever did. Stephen, I think, got the closest. And he got robbed blind in, in France against the, the the kid from France. Callum lost to the Turk in Turkey. Got, again, just a, a bad decision. But that's the bad side about boxing. Yeah. Where, where the kids just getting robbed left, right and centre. It's still happening now in the amateurs. It's mad the way you all know neither of you ended up going to the Olympics. Yeah, all no, I know. Oh, so yeah. my lad's buzzing now. It's, it's one thing that he could do what none but of us have done. So, cause of <laughs> so he's got a load of pressure on him. Like, I've seen the other day a bad decisions. I, I felt he'd done more than enough to win the other day. In the, in the championships and you just look them around the table at some of the judges I don't know if they don't know their arse from their elbow or they just, they've been doing it that long and robbing kids they just do whatever they yeah. want or either way it's wrong these are kids and, and they've all got dreams and want to do well and someone like when, whenever you talk about Olympic decisions I just think of Roy Jones Jr just that is like the yeah. I don't understand how he hasn't been given that gold medal yeah. still yeah. even though they proved retrospectively that know. three of the judges got paid and yeah. like wind and dined it blows me mind. Yeah. If it comes out on this proof, comes out on this proof that he has been robbed, basically, and the judges have been paid, how doesn't that decision should get reversed? Be, should be null and void. Yeah. At, 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 the, at the very very least, um, but that's that's boxing's own problem, and they're talking now about it not being in the Olympics in um, LA. I heard someone said that to and, you the day. And, and I'm saying that thinking if my lad's any good and he gets there, that's his year. Yeah. But what else is going to make boxing wake up and stop robbing kids blind and stop having corruption and stop... Ruins people's careers, lad. The politics are, and it ruins people's careers and lives. You know, you're talking about, like, the difference between winning titles and not winning titles or, or winning Olympic medals or golds or silvers. And that has a big knock-on effect in your career when you turn professional with what, what you're in and how much you're getting and your, your, your whole persona. That I think Amir Khan is probably the most successful silver medalist we have, but... No one really remembers the silver no, medalists, it's the don't. golds that, that you remember, the, the Joshua's and the lads that come through and win, and win all kinds after it. They're the ones you remember, so it, it's it's not good. As you say, that, like that's one thing that I always see Roy Jones mention as well. He he always says, you know, why would I ever want any fight to go to judges when I know what they can do to me? Like, I know that they can, they can ruin me. The one fight that sticks out for me straight away is Taylor and Castle. Yeah. You know what I mean? And... No, I never got done about it. No, and, and, it, and it won't. Um, nice awkward one for me. Cattle was signed to our promotion, the company that I work for, and Josh Taylor's staying in the Rotunda now. <laughs> and I, I like him, he's a nice kid. But I remember after the fight, it wasn't nothing to do with Josh Taylor. That yeah. could have been anyone. And that could have been anyone. Oh, other yeah. Cat, Jack Cattle. You know, Jack Cattle's a, 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 a lad that, that was an associate through boxing at the time, and I've got to know him since. He's a lovely lad. But at the time you're watching it, and again, not at all against Josh Taylor. Like the kids have always had a lot of time for them. Brilliant fighter. Remember when he was still an amateur in the wild cards and he was knocking the fuck out of top pros. And the pros were getting in and out with him. He's the amateur. Yeah. He's, he's brilliant. He's he's mustered a proper quality fighter. And but after the fight, I just thought that's fucking that's wrong. Yeah. And and no one's saying nothing. It's the same people all the time. I think I'd give a bit to Ian John Lewis, who then got reprimanded and has now left. The boxing boards so we won't be judging anymore which is a, a sort of a welcome shot in the arm for it because when i'm commentating on fights that's you that's your platform that you've, you've got to call it out otherwise if we don't start calling it out Who's we, we as in the people who, who are commentating and all the people who've got a bit of a voice who is going because the fighters can't say nothing because they get dragged into the board yeah. so we've got to say it more the people who've boxed or been there and now lucky to get the chance to actually talk about it and have a bit of an opinion that's why I think the judges should be in the future. It should be answerable. It should be, it should be former pros. Ian John Lewis was a former pro and he was one of the worst and that's what used to drive me around the bend because I think people would say, oh, we should be ex-pros and I, I agree totally. For me, if you're going to, I'm not saying, I get loads of stick on Twitter off people saying if you've never boxed, you haven't got an opinion and all that and it, it, it's it's not that whatsoever. It's I'm not going to go and tell you how to do a double leg takedown or whatever yeah. it's called because I don't know how to do it myself. I might watch it all day. I might, love watching it and enjoy it but i can't tell you technically how to do something yeah. in, that, in that octagon because i don't know how to do it myself i couldn't tell a footballer to kick a ball I've been going to match since i was five so i love football i love Liverpool. home and away whenever i can i'm there and i love the game but i can't play it and I, and, I, and I couldn't certainly tell one of them pros how to do it when carragher's in the gym in the rotunda 
talking about football. The minute he starts talking about it, I, I close my mouth. Same with you, there with me. He starts talking about it. Is it? Is that how it is? Must be. You're the pro. Yeah. You know about it. But you hit the boxing. It's weird. You say something. Nah, it doesn't work like that. It does. And then they're arguing over something that you know goes works that way. That. On a contact or something. That's and the goal doesn't half, work that way. I'm half glad I'm banned off Twitter. Yeah. Because I can't, it's lad. Just, ask the missus, lad, that used to consume me. I'd yeah. get home. And like, I can remember getting home one day, lad. She dropped me off and I sat on the bottom of the stairs and she came in about two hours later and I was still sitting at the still bottom sitting, of the stairs yeah. just arguing. Arguing. Like, it's, it's mad. I've calmed down loads on it. I used to, used to have a go all the time at people, but it wasn't me fighting in. It was, it was me getting stick off people where I think, what have you I'm, done with your I'm, life? I'm in the same coffee shop every day or I'm in the Rotunda every day, every night with my lads or because I'd retired, I literally sat in the Costa every day. I'd just be on my phone and my laptop doing whatever I had to do. But that was where I'd be every, every single day, the same place. And it's not like being an hard case or nothing, but it's, if you're that angry on Twitter, just, you know. And I'd, I'd say, look, I'll be in the gym anytime you want. I'm yeah. not even training. Hey, that's all I anytime say. Anytime you, you fancy, I'll be in the gym. And it's, again, it's hard to say it all the time. like a knob, like an hard case, but I get people saying to me, get some stick on Twitter. No one comes over to your face no, to say no it. No one ever says And it's, face. again, it's not an hard case thing at all. I could be sitting there and there could be 10 of them. They're still not going to say it because that's not what they're like in person. Yeah. But on that social media, they become someone different. So they start like, I always say it like what Fighting Tyson said it. is the most perfect thing in the world. Too comfortable. Too co make yeah. people too comfortable, not getting punched in the face. Yeah. You know that I mean? was my problem. I used to I expect people to be on there the way they are in real life. In real life. And when you bump into them, man, it doesn't work that way. But my problem was I expect it back. Yeah. So I wouldn't say anything there that I wouldn't say to someone's face. Yeah, exactly. And but then you expect it back and it doesn't work. I had, that way. I had a lot of jesty and it, it, it done me I didn't even more because he was actually a former pro MMA fighter. Yeah. Eight and three. Oh, there was a few of them. And lad, he commented on me post saying, stand up's poor. So I just put to him, lad, you're more than welcome to come down the gym and spar. Yeah. And he absolutely followed through. But it's, it's going, not... you wouldn't be able to take one of these Nottingham punches. I went, <laughs> well, lad, come down the gym Saturday or Sunday yeah. when it's shut and we'll have a spar and we'll see what right. happens. And as I say, he just followed through, lad. There's, there's ways of putting things across. Uh, and if we're all sitting in here now and everyone was all dotted around, he's not going to start shouting your stand-ups for or say it in the way that yeah. he's saying it on there. If you want to be crit critical of someone or, or because you've been a pro yourself, you're more than entitled to your opinion. It doesn't mean I have to take it. But just put it across in a way that you'd put across yeah. if you were speaking to me in a respectful way rather than stand-up. That's what he said after it. He put like, just trying to give you some advice. I went, you're not though. So, yeah, he's like, you need not. to keep your chin down. I was like, lad, don't you think I know that? Yeah. You know what I mean? When I, just, I, when like, I commentate now, I know there's probably kids out there who probably won't like what I said. And I remember when I when I first turned pro, I remember my debut, watching it back just to listen to what Jim Watt was saying about me. Just because he was a commentator yeah. and, and he's you'd been in the game before, you'd have respect for him. And I didn't want to take it personal. I wanted to go back in the gym and work on what he said. And the next time I actually spoke to him, I said, what did you reckon on the difference tonight? On the, He was like, thought you'd improve tonight. And it was great hearing him, hearing him say it. But if, if, if you're watching a fight and not the commentator, but the co-com, the one who's actually boxed or, or fought. Yeah. Cormier, he's brilliant on, on the UFC. Yeah. I, always listen, I think he's got a great voice as well as being knowledgeable what he's saying. But when they're talking about it, the last thing you want after you've done it yourself or if you're knowledgeable about, about the sport, even if you haven't done it, is to listen to them lying or, or bending the truth or telling yeah. you what you're watching isn't really happening. If the one the Reds winning and he's going on about the blue, you sit and you start getting confused when you're watching fights, then you think, whoa, no, he's winning. And, and then at the end he wins and he must have just got it wrong or, or got it, you know, done it a different way. So to cut a long story short, you need to just tell the truth all the time, but yeah. get across in, an, in a, a nice way. I always try and say like, I'd like to see him do more of that. I think that'll work in this situation rather than what he's trying to do now. So it's not as stand-up games poor. You know, I'd rather say yeah. <laughs> in a constructive way where you can just get your points across, but not be an arsehole basically and that that's again back to the social media thing it's just there's too many assholes out there who take yeah, what they're is. saying it's like being mad or being like you know so you can get laughs off the, off the, off the mate the little family makes that they've got as you say it's just you know the, the, it's, life's a bigger game than that social media and I sometimes think, it drags you down I right? know it does I was just literally just let, say, I think it, the social media like it's great like it, it helps me so much with sponsors and yeah. getting the, the, my name out there and that but it's terrible for people's mental health yeah it's I absolutely love that. terrible. That Instagram, I, especially, like yeah. people looking at it thinking that's like 
no, oh, I've got to have my life like that, you know what yeah. I mean? And I'm a boring bastard, my yeah. man. It's just like my little girl and my lads and the kids and the twins and me, and me missus and that, and all for out or taking the piss out of my dad when he falls asleep <laughs> in the airport or something. Man's like not, and I don't, I don't need to use it. I remember thinking when I retire, you know, it'd be nice not having to sort of sometimes fulfill all the, the obligations you'd have for sponsorship. Yeah. You'd have to post tweets out for things, and it'd be nice to just not have to do that. But then, as you say, it's a double-edged sword. You need it. You've got to have social media nowadays and young yeah. fighters coming up and young kids coming up. I remember I reserved a, a Twitter name for, for me lad, just Smigger. And he's got it for, for Twitter now and it's his little yeah, account. Nice. And, but I remember just thinking, kids growing up now, this is important. It, this It's a tool. It's important. And usernames and, and, and things like that. Like it's part of my job. Exactly. It, it's part of... Your obligations. Yeah. If you get a sponsorship now in that contact, it'll be we need five posts, fight week, we need two after the fight, or something like that. And there'll be some form of clause in there yeah. which your manager will sort out and deal with, but you have to do them. And sometimes it's easier for you to just let your manager log in on yours and post them on for you. But if you don't do them, you don't get paid. That's what people don't realise. Like you, yeah. you have to be on social media. So when you're getting people saying, Why are you on social media you're fighting next week? It's like, I probably don't want to be on it. I'm sitting here stressed out and I don't want to be on it, but I've got to because I've got to post this and this. I find it funny that when people say to me, oh, what are you doing? Go and train. I'm like, do you think yeah. I train 24-7? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I've already trained like three to four hours today. What are you on about? Yeah. You'll, um, you'll probably clash a bit more with your beard over that as the time gets on or when kids come <laughs> or whatever. I just remember like my missus like, she used to say, my beard used to say like, you're doing nothing. I'm like, I know I've been in the gym this morning. I ran at six this morning. I've done the gym and I'm back in again tonight. So I've got to, I've got to sit on the couch. That's the thing with boxers. We, we like, we were laughing the other day um, in the gym. One of the lads was saying, like, he's a mad, like a 40 year old virgin sitting playing PlayStation. But I, I play on the PlayStation <laughs> with, on the me, with me brothers because it keeps you in. Or when we used to fight, and it stops you eating food. Keeps you in. You just you concentrate on something. You're own house in your living room, sitting in your boxies with a dressing gown, house coat on, playing on COD. And it That's doesn't why get footy managers the best. Football though, manager, footy manager just gets you through. The, the things like times. that. What, what what you're doing to like to keep you in and and to keep that attitude. Like I, we we all love it. We just, yeah. We just playing on Call of Duty or something, but. I get moaned that as it is, lad. Me bear moans at me like saying she's when... a single dog mum. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you we have, haven't even got you kids have to sort of rest and not exert yourself too much. Because when you go in the gym later, if you have done, you'll spar, you'll get f***ed. Yeah. Your head will go and the next day you're playing catch up. You've got to sort of give your best in your sessions. Maybe not that dramatic, but when you go in, when you got to rest, you've got to rest and people just assume that it's like 24 hours a day in the gym again. That's probably down to Instagram the way it is. Yeah. Everyone's always putting the best stuff on there what they're doing well. Whereas... I'm training a couple of fighters now and, and 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 that's what I want to get into. But I know I'm not going to be one of them backslapping trainers, ass patting trainers. Ah, doing great. Yeah. If you're not working on your faults, how can you improve? And Facts. everyone's got them. Everyone's got, doesn't matter what level you're at, you've all got faults. You need to sort of, you've got to point them out and have them pointed out to you. If you have a bad day, you've got to correct it the next day. Yeah, it's a fact. But as you say there, the Commonwealth's year ended up, obviously the Olympics got, yeah. Pulled away from underneath, yeah. So what age did you turn pro? Turn pro, 20. Uh, um, turn pro in the April, I was 21 in, in the October. And um, I turned pro, sorry, yeah, March, went down to Frank Warren's, got a deal with him. Um, and Andy Oligan used to throw, he was like the fighter that I always looked up to because he boxed for the Tundra. Good body puncher, good fighter, good fella. He's that as mate. And he always said, if you turn pro, Go Warren and Billy Graham. He said, I wish I went with Billy at the start of my career because he, he he brought the best out of me towards the end. Um, so I did. I got a meeting with Warren, went down, and um, I got three grand a fight for six fights in my first year and then renegotiate the second year. And I was made up because I, as I, I knew like the going rate was about two and a half or something at the time. So I was buzzing. What, what year was that? 2003. I was eight. Eight, yeah. <laughs> See? I was eight years of age. It's mad, isn't it? It's just, honestly, <laughs> Hardly it's... anyone knew what MMA was. Yeah, no, no. I mean, dad, I, I, I knew what UFC was, and it was the old school one with no gloves oh, on. Oh yeah, no gloves. No bandages, no nothing. Fellas in geese, fellas in all it was like um, <laughs> like blood sports. Sumo wrestlers like, like, and the that. It was brilliant though, and but it was brutal. I remember watching some videos and like wincing at the telly. My dad was like, "Oh fuck, that's in that off lad." Like <laughs> elbows, the lot. And I seen a replay of one the other day big fella in a, in a gi and 
it was that unfortunately for Molly, obviously, what happened, that, that move, that crucifix. The elbow it? one. You get the back of Gary back Goodridge, elbow. I think that is, but she, it was the other way around. That he crucifix. tried to take him down, yeah, didn't he? And he, he ended one. up on his back, that was elbowing him there. Brutal. Where Molly was on, underneath yeah. on the, in the crucifix. I felt for her watching it. It's like, I like, did, lad. It's I, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. obviously. I'll say the same to Molly, and it was the same with Terry Etam and that. And until I only watched M MMA, UFC, yeah. when you were all fighting, all the shows you were on. And I'm, I'm lucky enough, I've been to a couple now. I went to watch Tilney Arena and, and I went to watch you in, um, in London. I got tickets off, off my mate Owen. He sorted me out with boss tickets. I was buzzing because my lab was like, he won the lottery when he's there because <laughs> he, he was struggling to get the tickets. And he's like, see what you can do, Dad. And, and then I got them last minute. I was made up. I knew literally row A. Yeah. Block A, row A. And, and he, was, he was buzzing at the night of his life down in, in the old two. But I got to watch it up close and it, it's it's brutal. It is like the same videos where I was watching back then. It's it, there's not much change with them gloves on and the safer rules. I suppose he can't elbow like that no yeah. more, maybe. Or, or but it's it's brutal, like it is. But you can't elbow like that. Down can't do twelve well, to six. I've got, I've got my own UFC expert in the house now. <laughs> Paul, he, he's mad on it. He, he, he's <laughs> honestly he loved that uh, that next gen, and he come back. He hasn't been for for a few months, but. I think it's in him. I think he's decent at it and he loves yeah. the stand up side of the boxing. But he had one shit spar his first day back and went, jibbing that, I'm jibbing that, I'm jibbing that. I'm just concentrating on me. But I said, it's just your first spar back. Don't worry. But he went, no, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to just concentrate on this because he had the championships and that. But he, um, he loves it. But that 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 show was great down there. And, and as you say, like the old school videos, I knew about it then. So 2003, it was, um, it was just, it was, it was exciting because I was on like the crest of the wave from the amateurs where the yeah. last three amateur fights were Craig McEwen, John Pascal and Andre Durrell oh, in George's no, only like top <laughs> level, you know what I mean? McEwen had beat Durrell and Pascal and they both beat him. So I was in there or thereabouts. That's why I'm saying like I'd love to have had the chance to qualify for the Olympics, even though there was no guarantee at all and it was a big ask. Um, so I was buzzing turning pro. Did you end up having all six fights in the year? I did, yeah, I got them in. Yeah, I was made nice. up. I was made up and I, and I laughed because I've had to mention it recently, but you think, you think you're buzzing and you're flying when you, when you, you turn pro and made 18 grand that year and I probably had to pay minimum 20% of it. Yeah, minimum. Out to, to, like people, more. Yeah. to people before tax, before everything else. And then the cost of fight camps think, and stuff like that. Like, you think you've made it because you're a pro, but I was getting more in the amateurs. I was on about 1,800 quid a month in the amateurs to box for England off lottery funding. You'd say pro, and it probably I was well better off as, as an amateur. And um, but that that's that's like the gamble you take. My first fight, I got matched with Howard Clark. He fought Fernando Vargas two years earlier for the IBF World Middleweight title in Vegas, where, where you're fighting next. And um, then went just on like a journeyman route. He lost yeah. like 50 odd fights, and he won one, I think, about a month before. I fought him on a cut eye because that real winning with the fight got stopped against um, Ross Minter, Alan Minter's son. And um, my trainer, Billy Graham, knew him. I was like, I don't want you to take it because he's my mate. And if he, if I'm in the other corner, you know, he's one of my kids, he's going to have a right good goal. And I remember thinking, I've sold 300 tickets. It's a Ricky Atten <laughs> show. I've got probably more than my commission off my tickets than I, I have for my pay. So I'll make sure a fight. If I can't beat him on what I am as an amateur alone, I shouldn't be fighting anyway. So I said, Billy, I'll be all right, you know. And, like, all right, I'm just, you know, just warning you. Like, yeah. He's going to have a, like, good goal. And it was the first time I'd ever done three-minute rounds. We only did twos in the amateurs then. Four twos or five twos before I, I got to the seniors. And the f difference in four twos to four threes. Our lads take the piss out of me. I sprinted to the ref because the ref was the one who gives the decision right after yeah. the bell. I'm sprinting to him, giving them my hands. I won every round, but I remember thinking, no, it was hard, that, because the three-minute rounds, yeah. Whereas now the kids are doing them. <laughs> but yeah, my debut was boss. I loved it. Um, in the MEN on Hatton when he beat uh, Vince Phillips. Because it was in the same gym as Hatton. I was getting to spar him a lot. So brought me on leaps and bounds. Yeah. Because he was, even though he was only a light welter, 10 stone, I was fighting on 11 stone, four or something at the time. He was, um, he's always walking around about 11 half stone, nearly 12 stone. He's strong as inside. Like, Best body punch you've ever like been in England. 75 key, is it? Something like that. He'd probably, yeah, about 12 and a half stone. Yeah, no, about 77. Yeah. About 77 key, 78 key. And he'd fight a 63 and a half, 10 stone, bang on yeah. 10 stone, 140 pounds. Um, but I learned so much of him in, in the gym. And, and the cat and the was, was right. Being around him and being around Billy Graham, maybe. Yeah. 
the, the gym's boss like that. Like we, we've got a, a similar set up in the Rotunda now where like Liam, Liam's a pro in there. He's trained by Joseph and Declan. And the, there's there's loads of other fighters in there. And everyone just helps each other and just puts a little bit of advice here and there if, if it's needed or if it's accepted is another matter. But everyone just helps each other. Yeah. I used to love it when, when I'd be sparring and I'd turn around and my three brothers are all leaning on the ring with their heads in, talking or move that way or start throwing your left to the body more, start doing it. And you know the advice they're giving is top quality advice. You're lucky having people like them around with the brains they've got. So I loved it at the time. I picked up loads off Ricky and being on his undercards, as I say, with Bosch, because we, we got to sell all the tickets for all the pool life. <laughs> all the scouts was wanting to be uh, a hat and fight. It was great. Great that, you know. I still can't believe he come back to the day into an exhibition. He actually, know, he looked I'll, in shape though, given his due. He, can't he, knock he him, man. He brilliant. looked in shape. He got down to 11 stone six, I think, for the fight middleweight. Yeah. Um, 160. Now, bearing in mind, he's probably been up to nearly 17 stone. I reckon he might have even been heavier. He's only short, so probably looks worse with him. But just being back in shape after retiring, I remember, he's, he's my mate. I remember when he retired thinking, and he, he was talking about depression. I remember thinking, because it hadn't hit me yet. I hadn't had depression yet and I hadn't retired yet. Yeah. And I think I did when I was fighting, but didn't address it as depression. I just thought I was just doing a rough, broke yeah. my hands at the operation and that. But looking back now, probably was. But at the time, I remember thinking, how oh, are you depressed? You know, you've got plenty in the bank. You've done really well. You've done, you've done brilliant. You've had a boss career. You've got a good family around you, but he weren't speaking to them. And, and the void that boxing leaves, you don't get it until you do retire. But I remember thinking about like being in being in, in, in the, the way he was and the shape he was in and the position he was in, the place he was in, the Z. So just from all that to, to get in the ring again, I'm I'm sound with exhibitions. I'm 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 all for them. Yeah. If 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 you wanted to do an exhibition in boxing, one of me mates, one of me brothers, me, any fighter out there, and enjoy it, you're not saying you're a pro boxer, you're not that you, you're building as an exhibition. Yeah. When Mike Tyson Roy Jones are boxing an exhibition, I buy a ticket for that. That's I, I, I actually stayed both. up and watched that. I did, because I mean? <laughs> it's an exhibition. But when you've got one of them saying they're coming back to fight and they're fighting the young kids again, what made you think you've got it now when you didn't have it 15 years ago because of your age? I you still know, can't believe dangerous. a commission signed off on, was it Holyfield versus Belfort? Exactly. How did the commission sign happened. off on that, lad? Exactly. He, 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 that's what I'm saying. He, he's an unbelievable fighter. And but how old is he? 50 we, were him, we were with him in, in Saudi uh, when Callum was fighting there a few months back. And me and my dad were just sitting talking to him and, and again, lucky and privileged to be in that position to be able to talk to someone like him. But he weren't, I don't think he was... All there. Maybe all there, yeah. And, and he's getting on now and, and he's had so many hard fights, but, but if, he's, if he's coming back in an exhibition and his health's okay, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. I don't mind the exhibitions, but the fights, it wasn't there years ago. It shouldn't, it's definitely not coming back You can't now. even check for CTE either until someone's actually passed. Until it's too late, you know what I mean? yeah. And, but you never know if I say like the that old, the old it. saying in, in boxing and this is why I was happy I retired when I retired it's always one fight too many oh, it's yeah. never a few it's always one and I, and I see it now and, and there's a few ex-pros out there and I'm not going to go into detail and name them but there's a couple out there in the slayer in the words and they're not they're not they're a bit slower than what he was a few years ago in the red the way they're speaking the reaction times you can see a little bit of a glazed look in their eyes and it's worrying and for me as, as, as an ex-pro would I have fought on? I got offered another fight. I probably would have took it. I got offered another fight for, for good money. I remember thinking, I should just take that. That'll be like my last fight. Our lad just said, you're not doing it. You said, it. we all said, if any of you look your age, or if you felt your age in there, yeah. which you said you did, you're done. That's it. No more. But it even happens to the greats, like Muhammad Ali. He didn't yeah. want to retire. Yeah, too many. You know what I mean? He had too many. He definitely and... had too many. Like, probably the, the, played a part in what happened to it's him. It's always better one fight too soon yeah where you where you question maybe i had another one well the fighter you mentioned before that, done it perfect ward ward yeah unbelievable done it perfect yeah if anything like people will say may have got he out too soon on, yeah, yeah he could have had on. a couple more because he, he certainly was all there but as you say you know you, you don't want to outstay your welcome in in boxing or mma it, it, it's too dangerous and and it's a young man's sport yeah. or a young woman's sport you're seeing it now with like i know he's not finished but you're seeing it now the likes like tony ferguson He's lost like five in a row now, I think, something like that. And he, he looks old in there, you know what I mean? It's a proper bad, like, conundrum, catch 22, because the only reason he's still getting us back after the loss is because he's entertaining, he's giving exactly. it all. Yeah. 
But then how, how much do you have to give before you can retire and say that's enough? How much, how much, literally, how much of yourself do you have to give? Your body, your brain, your, your, your mind, your faculties, you know. Life's, life's a, a long game after fighting. And yeah, fighting's only a short span. You know what I mean? It's yeah. only a short career. You've still got like 30 it's, years or something after you retire. It's, it's hard though, isn't it? as you know. And remember you talk after your last fight, it was unbelievable. And I remember thinking when I was watching it, that's probably. You, you, you've you've got it. You've got this persona now, and you've got to have to maintain it. And that's 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 you. That's Paddy the the Paddy. That's the fighter, and you're doing brilliant with it. But I think yourself, your real self, come out in that interview where you just probably just had enough. You you did you did a war massively where what happened just sent you over the edge. And, and it was nice and it was it was unbelievable for people to see that side of things because people don't see that in fighters. Yeah, you just see the you just see the image and and. and we mentioned social media. No one's going to show you anything they don't want to show you on social media. So you only get to see what the fighter wants you to see. And when you retire, the fighter's gone. And and it, it it's weird in your head what you're thinking. Like people are asking, what are you doing? What are you up to? What are, what are you yeah. doing now? I'm like, I'm retired, just going to Costa. You know what I mean? Or, or I'm retired, <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going, going to gym with the lads, or I'm going to be able to do what I couldn't do. I'm going for a meal, eight at my bed. Yeah. And I can have a bottle of lager with it, and I can do this, and I can do that. And, or I can... I can you know, I can do whatever I want to do now because I'm retired and, and you think it's great at the time, but unless you manage that right and fill your own day and fill your own mind, it can go the other way, back to what I was saying with, with, with Hatton and, and, and fighters that have spoke out about it. So unfortunately, that's like the bad side of boxing. Overstay your welcome, it can end up bad for you. Get out a bit too early. You're, like, oh, You're twiddling your tongues yeah, if you haven't made the plans because no fighter wants to make plans for... Retired because you want to fight. Plan. You want to yeah. fight forever. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep. Winning. Yeah, I'm gonna be the champ. So there's no backup plan there because that would be admitting defeat and exactly a bit of weakness in your own mind. But why am I planning for that when I'm gonna do this? So, it, it that's where fighters probably need helping and, and, and saving from themselves. They need a good team around them to do the planning in the background for them. The inevitable is gonna happen. You're gonna retire one day. Hopefully, you've done it with a few UFC titles, but you're gonna retire. Yeah. And then if you haven't made them plans or set them foundations in. Everything else comes into play then, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I want to be retired by the time I'm 40, like, defo. 40? Yeah. <laughs> I, was MMA, I, was, lad. I was 40 about four weeks ago, three weeks and ago. And then MMA, lad, like, look at your Romero. He's 48, 49. Yeah. He's still fighting. He's it's, Cuban, like, them jeans yeah. are just different, them Cubans. In the amateurs especially. But the, I, the lad, I'll be honest, I know I'm going to have enough money in the next few years to never fight again, but I love fighting. Yeah. You know what I mean? My favourite thing to do in the gym is spa. I, I, I've got a couple of brothers like that, <laughs> especially Liam. I and, love and, and it, it is probably the, it, it's the best thing for you to to learn your craft. Yeah. Uh, you know, see people doing mad training methods and some things I, I've seen on our internet some now. Some boxers like I have seen some boxers saying, "Oh, I've done like forty eight rounds this week." I'm like, "What? Forty eight? Know what I mean? I'll yeah. do like we spar twice a week, Tuesday, Thursday." Say I could do four or five rounds one day and then we'll do three or four the other. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I wouldn't... When I hear some boxers saying... Do you know ones who are saying 48 rounds and a week, the liars? <laughs> they are. <laughs> they're just, they're, I always say that. Like, you you ask you ask a boxer what his weight is or their weight is and they'll say probably five pounds lighter than what they oh, actually lad, are. I'm like you, the, you ask an MMA fighter what they are, they probably say two pounds heavier than what they are. I just but tell everyone asked. what I am, lad. I'm yeah. not asked. You know what I mean? Like, people boxers, think I'm a fat bastard. Have, you'd have to lie. I, I read something once and it was great and, and it... I can't remember so I'm not even gonna try, but it was something like boxes are just you have to sort of condition your brain, your mind from day one to lie to yourself. Yeah. I am fit. I am all right, I'm not injured. I am gonna make weight, I'm gonna do this, I am gonna do that. You've got to lie to yourself every day and, and it's it the way it shouldn't be lying, but you've got to sort of convince yourself That's every it. day. Convince, convince that yourself. even if you don't think you're gonna win, you're gonna win and, and it gets you through a lot. Obviously, that's where that weird mental strength comes that's in what from, I say, from like sport. I, I believe in myself that much that people mistake my confidence for cockiness and arrogance mm. when it's not. I just, I believe in myself yeah. more than anyone on this planet. Well, I think I do anyway. Probably people out there are believing themselves more, but I believe in what I say. You, you know what you'll find as well? It, it, it's mad, but people will confuse it with sort of arrogance and people will also look for the bluff. And one day they'll be looking to think, do you really believe in yourself that much now? Because time goes on. Yeah. Fight, you'll have your ups and your downs, and, and hopefully the downs are a few, but you, you, you'll go through your career 
and you'll get to a point, or I certainly did, and I know a lot of fighters that I've done, you get to a point in your career when you're coming towards the end where it's just a job and it yeah. becomes just a job. And the ones that we were talking about before who carry on and maybe have the one fight too many, it could be either because it's just a job or because they just can't let go of the sport because they actually do love it. Yeah. And there's a handful of them out there that are like that. But it, it's it, it, it's back to what we, we started with, the, like the sparring, and, and, and it's the best form of training. Some of the training methods I see on this social media nowadays, you think like, what, what are you doing it for? Like, what are you getting out of that? You, know, you see fellas throwing like weird punches, walking backwards on a treadmill. Like, what are you doing? Or there's like, there's, it's just the pad man. The pad I man's see- got kids on the treadmill walking backwards. The kids are never going to fight like that in his I life. I've seen a mad one the other day. It was like, it was a Russian one. They, they have the maddest techniques. And it was like he was getting hung, drawn and quartered. Did you see it? Stretching. For plank. Was it? But it was like, oh. but like he was getting... The- like um, basically arms are stretched out legs stretched out and he was just Blood hanging again, in the air yeah, just hanging in the air it's like what, what, what's that for and people were commenting on it oh good abdominal stretch I'm like are yeah. you yeah. messing it's just, it, it, it baffles me honestly and, and like you see good trainers out there and there's something and like we build a Liam McCallum's a top trainers but we, we build a Cal, uh, Liam's trainers are top trainers but we build a Callum's got Buddy McGirt at the moment and, and He's an unbelievable coach. I've always, I, I trained with him years ago myself when I went to America and he, he was the best coaches I've ever had. I've always been common sense and I've yeah. had some really good coaches uh, and his attitude to everything, even stand and conditioning, which I disagree with him on because I do think a lot of it's good. He's like, well, how's that going to help you in a fight? And that's his attitude to yeah. me. Well, why are you doing that? How's that going to help you in a fight? What are you? What's that going to, benefit you when it comes to uh, the my, seventh round of the fight that's something I do say boxing coaches are old school yeah like even my boxing coach Chris he's only like 32 or something 33 but I can remember telling him I was doing hip thrusts he's like, what are you doing that for they're for girls I'm like what are you on about lad if I have to get up off the floor like that and like use my hips lad yeah. they're for girls I told him the other day that like there's been a scientific study that sit ups are bad for your back and he's like that people have been doing sit-ups for thousands of years. What are you on about? That's why I never done them. My back was always... F- it's that <laughs> lad. There you go. Sit-ups are bad for your back. <laughs> I used to have a bad back and I still have, obviously, but I remember thinking one day the penny dropped about 10 years into my career. They said, the reason you've got a bad back is because you're not doing anything to strengthen your back. Every time something comes up, what's involved in your back? You're going, I'll leave that. Yeah. I'll leave that. I can't do that because I'm too scared of my back being pulled or pulling my back again and being out for a week. So you never do the back strength in the morning. So your back's always going to be bad. But you just, you think, ah, I'm all right. I'll do my sit-ups on the front. I never do the back. But yeah, there's um, there's some mad methods out there. And, and it, it just, it baffles me. And boxing, maybe UFC now, because people watch it. It's it's that weird thing where I watch Ronnie O'Sullivan. Oh, knock him out four seven in. And he's unbelievable. And I watch it. It's great. And I used to have a nice table down in my basement. I go down and try and pot. And I couldn't pot a state red. And it do me head in. I was going to the queue on the thing, and I go back again and have a go again, and I, I get a red, black, red if I'm lucky, and, and it, it does your head in because you've got to be on that every day practicing. Yeah, just like we the are top in the gym. Will make it look easy. So when you're watching boxing, you think I, I can do that, or the UFC or MMA, you think I can have a go with that, and you go in the gym and actually try it and realize how hard it is. But these people are trying to sort of show you different ways to to do something that. It's been done the same way for, for years, years. And, and there's not going to be no new methods that will will do it, especially with boxing. Boxing is, is the way it is and will always be the same way. And, and the, the new methods, what these new trainers are trying, I don't even think the trainers, it's just, it's not going to work. The old school stuff in, in, in the majority is the best stuff. Yeah. So the old school coaches in the majority will probably be the best coaches for boxing. If you want to box, spa. Yeah. If you want to fight, spa, you don't get... An, actually practice your trade you've got to go there in the gym to be able to yeah anyone can hit fight. pads like can't he you exactly. know what I mean and the pads on the back that I'll exactly say. the pads on the back it is so true isn't it how many pro fights did you end up having then in your career see when we're talking about but I couldn't remember I had to google it I had to go and box it and look at my own record <laughs> it was 47 that's why like you're laughing at some of the kids you fight I don't remember half the names of the fellas that I was fighting I don't remember loads in the middle I can't remember the orders of them no more I turned pro in 2003. It was 20 years ago next year yeah. I turned pro. I can still remember how I felt, what I smelt, and how, 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 I, how, like, how I threw a certain shot in some fights early on in my career and early on in the amateurs. I remember the when you're getting caught with a right hand, you've seen a few lights and the buzz comes, and I, I remember loads of things like that. But I couldn't name you the last five of bonds I had, but I remember the big ones. I remember the 
the, the ones that stand out, the, the big events and the big occasions in, in your life and in your career, they, they'll they always be there. But that's why it pissed me off when you get like offered a fight with Andre Ward and people are saying, why are you taking that? Like, you've got no chance of winning. I've got a chance. I'd slim to none, but I've got yeah, a chance. Uh, no if, matter, I hate that. You know, you've got no chance, lad. It's a fight. It's not like Liverpool playing Accrington Stanley. Exactly. You know what I mean? I needed him to have the worst day of his life, me to have the best day of my life. Buster Douglas I, Tyson. I could, I, it's happened before. If mm -hmm. I land, it happens. And you know, if it doesn't happen, I've got my biggest pay I've ever had in my yeah. life. And I've fought in, in the States, topping the bill against one of the greats. And, and he's an Hall of Fame fighter now. Would you say he's the best fighter you've ever yeah, fought? Yeah, oh, easy. Yeah, but being in the ring with sparring as well. Sparred some good kids, but unbelievable. It's just, remember, I always remember, um, I always tell the same stories. Also, you probably heard before, just about his jab. I've been him some good jabbers. George Groves, Arthur Abraham, like really good, Good kids with good jabs, and they are good jabs. I remember thinking, let's see what this is like, because it's like the first thing of a fight. You'll know yourself when you yeah. go for the fight. It's the first thing. Yours is different because you're expecting kicks as well, but it's always it like, is, it's either a let's jab see or a this leg first kick. jab, yeah. yeah. Uh, and he sort of just relaxed and he just went bang and yeah, but right back. And I remember thinking, now I have like giggled to myself, thinking, how's he just landed that? <laughs> I was ready, I was waiting for it, I was expecting that one. Knew jab. it was coming. I knew it was coming, <laughs> and I just didn't even see it coming. He just he just landed it, but. They're the type of fights that that you remember. But forty seven of them I had. Um, I got I got Rob Blind in, in an English title fight. It's the only fight that I, that I, I genuinely believe that was a, was a a lesson I needed at the time because I was I was doing things wrong in a way. And, and after that, I won the British. But apart from him, the only losses that I had were to world champions or future world champions. Yeah. Same with uh, like the other lads. They've only ever lost to world champions. Stephen Lee McCallum and. Um, Except Liam's in Russia again. The terrible Rob, decision. No, I know, bad, lad. bad decision. I, I I didn't know until obviously I had Liam on the podcast. He dropped him, and the other kids still got that round on the scorecards. Ten eight. Uh, sorry, yeah, yeah. It went from being a ten, ten eight, eight to, Liam, to Liam to a, a ten, ten nine, nine to the other kids. So it's yeah. a three, is that point, a three swing? point swing. Yeah. And then he's the other kid. Well, was because the decision. ref waved it off, and I, I had to go with the ref after it. That's what's good about being retired. Like you can have a go with officials yeah. or, or call them <laughs> out on it at least, and just you know. I said to him, you're the worst ever you've ever seen in my life. I, that, that was a knockdown. And him just starting that count and realising, listen, it was soft, but I've seen well worse given. Yeah. The rules are the rules. If you land with a punch on the target area and they fall to the floor, it's a it's knockdown. A knockdown. Yeah. And the law of the land is what it was. And he just, he just brushed it off. Whereas if it was Liam, he'd have counted a million percent. So that round went from being a 10 8 to Liam to a 10 9 to the kid. And then I got the scores um, after the fight. And again, one of the officials said, take a picture of it, but don't put it on social media. And I just banged it right on Twitter, saying, there's the scorecards, read them yourself. Like, there was rounds where Liam won well what they were giving to the kid, and, and Liam wasn't really getting much, but good experience. But again, pissed Liam off because that record, because yeah. he weren't a world champion, and obviously he's, he lost a, a fight that he, that he felt he won, but it hasn't hindered him. He's been been flying since. He's he was telling that. me he wants to get that one back, obviously, but I doubt that kid will ever fight him. If he'll come out of Russia, then it, it can happen. Or if he can come over to, to the UK, it can happen. But again, it's another thing, you know, everything that's going on over, not over there, but in the Ukraine now with Russia. When we went, it was it was, it was a boss trip. You yeah. get to go to some mad places with the fighting, don't you? And yeah. you've probably done it yourself. And when would you ever find you and like six of your mates and your family and like your coaches and all your mate, your brother's coaches in... in Katerinburg, Russia, bouncing around on scooters and that, getting kebabs at like two in the morning because you can't sleep because the time difference and that and just being in them type of places it's boss. But yeah, back to them, back to what you said, like the, 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 the losses, all relatively Who else had the losses? Kids. Ward. Like Ward, Ward as you say, Ward, Gale, Ward's one of the best, the best ever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially at that weight division. He's, he's just gone in the Hall of Fame. And, and as you say, you know, he'd be Kovalev twice after, after he, he'd boxed me. Uh, after he beat me and just got I out remember that. Yeah, he I got out the, a bit early I, I, he I did very back early because I remember the first level but... one everyone was saying bad decision yeah and then the second time he absolutely I, I, was, um, I was a guest on Sky him. for that and, and the next time yeah, he, he, he left it to no doubt as, as Roy Jones was saying don't leave the judges in, in charge but um, some some fighter definitely the best at being in with but it was, yeah, one, it was one of them where I was never not taking the fight. Yeah, it goes without saying. It's like just, if someone offered me to fight Khabib Nurmagomedov, do you think I'd say no? Exactly. You know what I mean? Of course I wouldn't. Whether, you, say, whether yeah. you think you're ready or not. Yeah, whether I think I'm ready or not, first, I'm taking the but, fight. But what's the first thing you're going to ask when you... Like, Paddy Khabib's there. What's the first thing you're going to ask? When? 
weren't all that much. Yeah. And and they had the first questions and that. That was I got a phone call. I was in I was in Marbella um with the kids and and, and my bed was sitting on the beach and my phone goes and it's, it's Eddie. Hey, this this war fight's still there, you know. I go ahead, let me know then. And he phoned me back and, and I ended up getting an operation while I was gonna get on my elbow brought forward, got the operation straight away. And it was end of June when when I said I'd be ready for. So it was it was all it was it was, it was a no brain. It was never not happening. But I've said this to a few people. If it's like people who are grafting on sites or have got their own businesses or, or who are in the office every day, if you got offered a year's wages or a couple of years wages in one go to graft your balls off for twelve weeks and give everything you've got at that job and not see your kids as much as you you will and all sacrifice through the things yeah. what you have to do when you're in, would you take it or would you say I don't deserve that? Give it to someone else. First thing, is, the first question you ask: yeah. How much, when, and and, and where, and, and that that was it. It happened, but he's definitely the best. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a, as you say, the Gale and Groves, but he is a different level to them too. Yeah, no disrespect to the Gale no, and Groves. No, no, not at all. Mean, Since the Gale's a little gold medalist and two-time world champion, I think he won two and, is, is and there, some career. Is he retired now, the Gale? Yeah, he's retired. Yeah, he he is, retired he? a few years back. Yeah, I think Groves he, he lost. He lost to Eubank and retired. And Groves, yeah, Groves retired recently. And uh, Callum was Groves the last fight. Yeah, Callum stopped him and then he retired. Um, Again, you can you can ask him that grows. I, I always sort of I always got on with him even though I fought him. You know, I was that you always have that respect what you have for fighters and I think he's a nice kid to be fair. I think um, he got bumped in the first frost fight, like yeah, personally. Yeah, I think he dodgy, got yeah, dodgy, dodgy stuff. And again, no foul players such. I think he just got it massively wrong. I would foster on the night. It's it just one of them things, but it corrected itself in the end. But it, it's the the type of fighters like like them. They had, they had brilliant careers. He had, they had good careers after, obviously, he retired. He retired with Callum, but I think towards the end, his was a case of maybe just being a job. It was a job. a job for him. Yeah. I was just about to Ma say yeah, that. Yeah, maybe. And he was earning good money yeah, at the end. Yeah, he was earning good dough after the good on him because he paid his dues. But after, um, I think with Callum, he was talking about his, in his injury or something. That's what winds me up. Now when I see people saying, like, Callum's only beat a, a one-arm Groves and all that. It's like... They just look for like the, the lowest they insult do. they can possibly get. You know what I mean? The kids beat everyone that he's that he's been in there with Bark and Allen. Does um, my head in lad? People say to me, Oh, he still hasn't fought no one. Like, what? I'm I've fighting got, whoever they're putting in front of me. Fighting who they're putting yeah. in front of me. I've got three wins, three finishes in the UFC, yeah. and people are still fighting saying on, on YouTube and on my stuff, oh he's fighting some articans. You could win no to, one you in could the win UFC the title tomorrow though. And, and and you'd still have your critics. Yeah. That, that's what you have right to remember. Like, it, 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 it's gonna be there no matter what. It, it's it's just people walking around with an umbrella waiting for it to rain. They're just, they're just waiting for something yeah. to, 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 to criticise. And they're not fans, the critics. That, that, they, the honest, type of people go to restaurants, order a meal and complain about it. I can't believe some of the comments that I've had since Molly's fight, lad. You know what I mean? About, like, about Molly? About Molly and about yeah. me and about the gym. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's oh, like, all finished now. Yeah, yeah, all that. One hype saying down, the next one's coming in December. And I'm just yeah. like, <sighs> slide a lit of fire with, under the my thing, ass, yeah. lad. The thing with I train as well, I trains are not I trains if you're delivering and you're winning. Yeah. And, and in your game, kids get no sweets, clothes mouths will get fed, whatever you want to call it, whatever way you want to dress it up. Yeah, it's prize The characters that stand team. out and the ones that are getting paid are the ones that people like me who, who, who love another sport but will watch that and admire how hard it is and, and admire and respect it and watch it. But I'm not, I'm not, I couldn't name you. I couldn't name you five fighters in, in your weight division. Yeah. I, I, that, that's me. I'm a casual UFC fan. I'll watch it when my lad's got it on. And the show I watched recently was just non-stop, all stoppages and all, mostly stand-up. And I fucking loved it. It was great. Another one where it's more wrestling. It's not it's not really what yeah. I would watch. But I'm, I'm honest and open about it. But when you, when you, when you, the way you have to be now, now I'm just saying that in a derogatory way either, but when you're, you, you You've got a persona now, and you've got a, a character, so to speak. Now that people and, think that's what and, it is, and you, you're being like your natural self, and, and and doing whatever you want to do. But it's Paddy the Baddy. No one would have known who you was if you didn't have the band the way it was, the way you speak. Yeah, you're right. And if you were just fighting and producing the results you were producing, you just say, "Oh, that's a good win." Who's this kid from England? Yeah, but but it's not that way. It's, it's well bigger than that, and I've you're earning better I've money as a result. You're doing exactly. You, Arnold Allen. Do you know who Arnold Allen is? Lad, he's ranked fourth Good in the fighter. featherweight rankings. He's a brilliant fighter, lad. He's a weight below me. But, like, he's not like me. You know what I mean? He hasn't got a personality like me. Quiet. I think yeah. he's got about 100,000 followers on YouTube. I mean, yeah. on Insta. But, yeah, lad, yeah. as I say, he's, he's brilliant, lad. Yeah. 
He's brilliant. He's like rank four That's in the saying. world at his weight. People who want to jump on it and say it's too much of that and not enough that. But yeah. if you're beating whoever's in front of you, you're beating them. Not Molly, Molly come short recently. But that's another classic example. From what I was watching and what I was listening to, they were screaming for Molly in, in, in the arena. Yeah. And not the girls girl from, from New Jersey, Jersey yeah, wasn't Jersey. she? But what a fighter she was. Yeah. And she made it look She's a prodigy the way she was. Like, she was unbelievable. She's a prodigy. She's she been doing jiu-jitsu since she was six. Exactly. That was the classic grappler based striker fight. No one had heard about her. With yeah. the all but that's because she's the way she is. So people won't like her. People mightn't like it. But with yours, they can't really call yours at if you're still winning. When you're saying about people having a go at you and, and, and criticizing and just looking for something to criticize, it's like you have to take one little step back and, and you mightn't do it until you retire because uh, you can't get big headed, you can't get too carried away with yourself. But when you actually retire and take a little step back and think, man, I'm, I'm a scally from, from Liverpool, <laughs> I've fought in Vegas and I've fought in New York or I've fought there or i fought there, and you're probably never meant to. You're probably never meant to get yeah. to there. You and, and us and everyone else and, and the people you see who are fighting over in the States or who are having big fights in, in, in London or whatever it is, like the, the chances of, of doing that and the chances of making it Taken from an Al Fart who's retired, <laughs> it, it it it's hard to do. Yeah, all them t all them things. We're in like the zero point one percent. Easy. All them things you said no to when you were a kid. I can I can look back now. I can I can look back now with fondness. Whereas when you're fighting, you just want that. Yeah, Sam, but I want that and I want that. And you're always looking at the next best thing. But the chances are all them things what you sacrifice when you're a kid. I've had these talks with me lad. You've got to say no to so much things and you so have. many things that you'd love to fucking do. Places that you want to go with your mates, going on the ale, experimenting with drugs, drink, whatever it is you want to do or whatever you, you couldn't do. You can do that when you retire, but you miss out on that moment and then moments are gone and you're not going to yeah. get them back. And the, the, there was holidays what me, what me mates went on when I was younger and I'm looking at them all while they're on holiday and you missed out on that, you missed out on this, that. But then you're boxing somewhere, you're fighting somewhere and they're coming to watch it and, yeah. and then you, yeah, giving them the life experience. You, you make up for that in, in a way, but I'm still just to I've never to been to the white party, lad. I've never <laughs> been to the white party. I never went to Amsterdam till I retired. I was made <laughs> up when I went, but I, I'd never ever go when I was younger because I couldn't go in here and eat, couldn't smoke weed, I couldn't do anything. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't go. But I've been, I've been a couple of times since, and it's brilliant just being able to just do whatever you yeah. want because I'm, I'm retired now. But the chances of of a kid like you growing up, yeah, and I've seen that video, your, your first day um, interview, first it's hysterical. Interview, it's a great your braces it? on, it's hysterical. But Pick and jamble if you're told braces. in there and then you're going to be fighting in Vegas and all that, he'd have believed you, but no the old fella telling them probably wouldn't. Oh yeah, no, I'll be honest, lad, loads of people laughed at me for years because as I say, I believe in myself more than I've ever met anyone. I can't help it. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't even know why, lad. I, would, I think I was just born with it. But it's only fighting that I think about it. Yeah. Like I don't can't, like a calmness. Yeah, like, I don't you know, believe okay. in myself. Like, I don't believe myself when it comes to anything else. It's you know one of the things where it's a good job I got me bed when I was 16, lad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I, I can't spit, see through the lips on me, lad. I can't. I, I'm a big shit house. <laughs> Swear, lad. It's heavy. I always say, like, when, when my lad's boxing and all people talk to you about the kids boxing or, or fighting in, in, in MMA and that, I always say like, about them when they're in gyms, how good they are for kids, where they'll bring you out your shell. Yeah. They'll really bring you out your shell. If, you, if, you, if you're if you and you're quiet, it'll sort of, beat it, it'll get beaten out of you. You'll, be, you'll come out of your shell yeah. whether you like it or not. If you're arrogant and loud or whatever, it might tone get you right down. You. They'll get yeah. beaten out of you. If you're a bully, it'll certainly get beaten out of you. And, and if, you, if you're like within yourself and, and, and not aggressive as such, it'll teach you that aggression which you need that yeah. old saying I, I've seen Joe Rogan saying it recently I've seen Jordan Peterson a few others it's better to be a, a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war yeah and it, that's so true but when you just mentioned about it that's what like I'm saying to me, kid, me, me lads and, and kids when they're boxing you've got that calmness about yourself I can handle myself I'm alright I don't yeah. look for trouble I don't want trouble I don't want to fight with anyone in the street, but I'm, like, I'm all right. Yeah. And if it happens, I'm I'm, I'm perfectly I'm safe. And I've got that confidence, even 40 and out of shape. I'm sound, I'm all right. I want him to be somewhere in a club and there'll be trouble in. They go that way. Yeah. Nothing to prove. And that kindness and that confidence in yourself, as you're saying, it comes from all them days and weeks and months that you put in in gyms with positive role models around. You're all doing the same thing, pushing each other. And you, you develop that you do develop that confidence where when you're fighting and when you're younger, it's like, nah, I'm going to win that. And you're yeah. genuinely deluded enough to believe it. And yeah. you, you do. And and you are, as you say, fighters are, 
the a weird, different breed. The weird, totally different breed because you, you think you can literally, on fight night, once them wraps are on, you fight 10 men. Yeah. Not a problem. Like even one of my best mates, Maz, it's funny, he said that on one of my vlogs not too long ago. He's like, lad, he used to, used to say all this when he was 15, 16, when he first started, I want to be in the USA, I want to be this. And he was like, at first we were all like, yeah, man, sound. And then we started watching me fight in the Olympia and then stuff yeah. like that. And they were like, I kept saying it. I kept saying it. And like, they started to believe. And then now, lad, I've got the whole world believing. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's just, and I come from believing in myself. Just like you, you believed in it's, yourself. It's like them things when you see the yearbooks and, and the ones who, who made it. Or like, yeah. That's it. You can see one on Drake or someone else and where they're like, I'm going to do this, that, that. And the Madison one's brilliant. When I was brilliant. a kid in school, all I'd do is throw Have like, you seen the James gloves. Madison one? Oh, we've yeah, seen it recently. Where I've the teacher it said to him, uh, not one, in, one in a million become a footballer, you won't become a footballer. And yeah. he said, I am that one in a million. Yeah, seen, brilliant lad. Seen one of Steve Harvey. One of his old teachers said he'll never be on telly. He yeah. sends a telly every Christmas. That lad, I hear. Someone said that to last evening in school, and, and he was actually all right, the teacher. I, I had to leave. I went around a sixth form to date my lads. Again, back to that. But I got asked to leave sixth form. I was boxing for England in Sardinia. I come back, and I went to Hungary three weeks later, boxing for England under 19s. And I was first year of sixth form. And the teacher said, Look, you're missing too much time with this boxing lag. I was like, I know, but I'm not like it's not like I'm. Just boxing down in the social club. I'm yeah, boxing you, for England yeah. to represent my country. Like, no, you need to make your decision. I remember saying, oh, please say, look, I, I don't, I'll catch up with the work. And he just, he told me how to Legend. go. And that was it. Just took me tie off and went. Same teacher said to last Stephen, this boxing mark's never going to pay your bills, lad. They were his exact words. And when we go back for him, assemblies or, or present, he's just still there. he always takes a sick. He, he, I think he's still there, but he, he takes a sick. You know, he, he, he won't, um, he won't go in well, there. I but got, I got people will to... tell you, like, you're not going to do something early. But all the while, while he was saying all that, three, four years before, I'm sitting in class doodling boxing gloves or designing shorts. And, and one of my mates always says that to me. He said, I used to sit there, lad, when you were like 12 and you'd be designing your boxing shorts, what you're going to wear in money. <laughs> and and we, we had none of that when we were kids. Yeah. It was just playing black shorts. But I used to sit there drawing like boxing gloves and Sick shorts. What I, I think it, you visualize what, what, what you, what you yeah, want to be. You. And you're deluded enough to believe it. So what happens? I'd, I got told by one of my teachers, lad, after I got Nick selling. What are you selling for? I was like, ah, oh, doing it to pay me gym. Interview, what you've Literally, done. I said, doing it to pay me gym. Yeah, you need to leave that plastic. You're too small for it. Like at the time, should have went just weight classes, you know. <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. Should have, but it didn't. So yeah, just yeah. like, ah, oh, yeah, sound. Focus on your academic work. You'll never get anywhere with that. Yeah. So I don't because it, it is people like killing dreams. As I know such when you're a teacher, you're meant to believe in someone. You're meant to say you can be anything you want. But that's what's wrong with the school system now. I think they, they put I, kids down. My, 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 my teachers were sad in school and one of them gave me the best bit of advice I've ever had. Penny Beard, her name was Mrs. Beard. She was Miss Beard. She was great. She was my form teacher. I, mean, I was just fucking about one day and I wasn't bad in school. I got suspended once at a fight and, and some kids squared the fire extinguisher and ended up chinning them and, and, and <laughs> I felt an arm on my shoulder and I just turned around and it, what was there? It was the teacher. And the teacher was sad with me. They were all all right because I was okay. I used to sit with the PE teachers and I'd have my dinner or every now and then sit with them was they give me the lesson off because I was fighting that night or yeah, yeah. or half my mates were all smoking or smoking weed or sagging school so I ain't weren't doing either so I'd just stay in in the school or sit with beds or, or, or a few of my mates who didn't smoke or nothing but the teachers were sound with me and always backed yeah. me and remember I first got picked to box for England and um, you needed to find 500 quid to go because England schoolboys were skint and I went in and, and in school and they, they found out that I'd been represented to box for England schoolboys in, in South Africa and said yeah is two fifty off the school check, and it's two fifty off the parents association. Does your sponsorship cover nice that? Star. My school, and it, it was as you say, it was good. So not all of them, some of them do actually support and get behind. Like my lad's got some in his school now. That his piece, um, teaches a boss with him with, with the boxing, and like he hasn't boxed for England yet, but they're good with him and and, and he support him. But you should being good academically and being intelligent, book smart isn't the answer to everything. No. There's people out there who, who are making fortunes off their own companies, off just finding little niches like in the no market. No qualifications at all. No qualifications. And, and that I'll say, and that again, I don't know if it's Jag or if it's real or not, but the, Elon Musk or someone it was saying, like, I didn't go to that, but the people that work for me do. do yeah. It, 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 it's so true, it happens. It, you shouldn't really just concentrate on academic success, especially when there's stuff that you're trying to sort of be successful in. You'll never probably use in your life. You know, some of the stuff that they're teaching kids in, in maths or science. Yeah. I'll when are you going to use a Bunsen burner when you retire <laughs> from school? You know what I mean? 
Het is zo nice you go into that form of things. Yeah. You're not going to sit there and all to work. I can work one, like, because I remember from school, but you're not going to get to use a bus. Actually, I can't even right? remember how to work one. Definitely not. But lad, don't, before we go on to the Ask Paddy segments, I need to ask you about what you're doing now after boxing, because you mentioned it to me before, lad, and it's very interesting, and obviously want people to know about yeah, that. Yeah, I've been doing loads of things, obviously. That, that's like, that's the thing when you retire, you try and find things to do or, or stuff you've wanted to do. I've, I've, I commentate, that, that's, what, that's what pays the bills. I commentate full time and I love it. And it's boss. Obviously, you give your life to boxing or, or your sport. And then when you retire, it's like, go and do something new because you yeah. can't do that no more. But it's not all in all, but it's more or less all in all. And I yeah. know a lot about it. And I, and I like to think I can read a good fight and I can, I can, I can talk well about it and I, and I can tell the truth without sort of exaggerating. And, and, and that's hard to find on telly nowadays with, with boxing, especially. So that's what I'm doing. But I've, I've, been involved with for a, a while now to start a, a union, a boxing union, a, a fighting union. I don't want to just stick to boxing. I think the way the world is at the minute, everything's going on, the way unions are, it's a great time to to, to bring this back out now because yeah. we can do it properly. We can get the right people in, in place. There's MPs there, there's, there's union leaders and union workers who, who, who will take the boxing and the fighting union, sorry, under the, the umbrella. And it's something that, Boxing definitely needs, boxing certainly needs. And I'm not slagging the UFC by any means or by in any way, but I work with a lot of the lads who, who, who've been involved with the UFC on, on the television aspect. And we were doing a little study on how much of the actual income gets yeah, to fighters. Yeah, like 85% goes to the UFC or something like that. It's like 15% of the fighters in the UFC. Yeah. In boxing, it's, it's it's a lot more. In football, it's like 90-something percent. In the American sports, it has wages. to be like 51% going yeah, to the players. Exactly. Now, if there was a union in place where all the fighters in the UFC could 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 sign up or MMA, even if they got 20%, it's 5% more, but it makes a lot of difference to yeah. the boxers. Together, everyone's stronger. You know, the socialist views, Labour Party views, Labour, you know... It's not that it's close to Tories. Like anyone can get involved, no matter what you vote, but a union together, you're stronger. At yeah. the moment, there's there's people out there, maybe promoters, maybe the boxing board, maybe commissions worldwide, and, and what they say goes and it's unchallenged and the boxers got no one to help them. After the time, kids are signing contracts and they, they haven't had one bit of legal advice, even though the manager said on it, go and get legal advice. He's your manager, you're supposed to trust them or here. Yeah. So they're meant to look after you. So you just sign whatever they're suggesting you sign. But then a few years down the line, something will go tits up and it doesn't work. So as long as the boxers and, and the fighter have a voice for them, basically, and if a union can provide that, then we can get the right people in place and the right board there and the right finance behind it and the right things. If if every fighter in the world was insured when they got in there, whether they, they, they knew it or not, if they got injured and they got out and right, you were insured on the policy because you're in the union. There's, yeah. there's your injury covered, there's your operation covered, there's your expenses covered or something. Even just something like that, that would be a massive help because fighters have got not on that. And you know it yourself because you are one. There's not many people willing to help you, even when you're winning, even when you're doing great. And especially when you're not doing great, there's no voice there and there's no, there's no, there's no arm around your shoulder helping you, yeah. basically. So, yeah, that's a fact. Been getting involved with that. Yeah, and a couple of other things regarding like boxing and tickets and fighting and that, but not on there. Not on, as, not on ever as good as fighting. No, not on ever be as good as fighting. I know that myself. But lad, well, I only got to put them up before, but on my YouTube, I always I have like an Ask, Ask Paddy segment, so people put questions in, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, as I say, thank you for coming on so short notice. Like, no, they only asked us today because they got it. let down. So, and let me just get on this right away. Uh, Bakes has asked, what a name, Bakes? Bakes. Who was the hardest puncher he ever faced or maybe top three? Top three, Arthur Abraham, um, big puncher. George Groves could crack. And a fella called Kid Chocolate, Peter Quillen, um, from, from the Chocolate? States. Kid Chocolate, yeah. He what took a name? His dad's, it's a good story behind His dad's Cuban. And there used to be a great fighter from, from Cuba years ago called Kid Chocolate. So he, he adopted the name. He's WBO champion. He lost his title to Andy Lee. Um, I sparred him in a wild card and he, he could crack. And yeah. Especially with the sparring gloves on, you, you knew he was a big puncher. So yeah, them three. Yeah, it is, it is a funny one, to be honest. Wizard Warzone's asked, please ask him, if if needed, would you rather box a kangaroo on TRT or a silverback gorilla that has only been fed so its whole life? No, what? I've seen some videos of people having statements with kangaroos and it actually looks half decent. Yeah. So, yeah, the kangaroo. <laughs> Wouldn't mind a little scrap with a kangaroo, yeah. <laughs> What's Paul's... Be Sleeping Dragon asks, what's Paul's best three wins? Um, 
probably British title fights or what, what, what I've won. Um, I've had some, I've had some lovely knockouts. I've had some great knockouts over the years. What, what, like a laughing joke again with me lad now saying you haven't folded no one yet. You know, you'll get that feeling where you, where you yeah. put someone a kip or that, that's or what does you, my head in a bar. My debut, it went down as a TKO. Yeah, lad, I f- folded him <laughs> in half. Lad, that was a knockout. He was I've, on the floor I've seeing a, stars. I've had a few of them, and I, and I laugh with me lad because I've been telling him to throw more body shots recently because kids aren't doing as much. I yeah. just I, I stopped loading the amateurs with body shots and I say to me lad. This is what I said to him. Like, you'll never, ever, ever regret landing a good body shot. He went, what do you mean? I said, when you do it, you'll know what I mean. Yeah. You'll feel your hands sink right in. You'll hear the noise off him. You'll know you've got him. And, and, and it's a brilliant, weird feeling as a fighter, which you might not understand unless you've you've been in there and done it, but it's a weird feeling, but it's addictive. Yeah. And you like and I always remember Billy Graham saying it to me, your problem is you, you can hear people and you like doing it. So you're looking for it too much. And yeah. You're loading up too much. But yeah, um, three good, three good top wins, like winning the British Quigley Dodson and that. Yeah. And then they've got two half related questions here. Ben Yeder says, will he bring back the Contender Series? I've been speaking about it with, with the, the television company that I work with now and it can be done and I'd love to do it. I'd love to do it where I'm not really bothered about presenting it. I'm not bothered about whether I commentate on it or whether I've, I've, I'm just a producer and, and in the background, it doesn't bother me. But if we've got a top host to do it, a top X fighter or a top current fighter to, to, to do it, and all you need is eight good hungry fighters who, who are probably unsigned, yeah. that you can get them on board and get good sponsorship. On that first show, they were doing like a race around the track carrying the family in a, in a horse cart <laughs> and the winner got like a brand new... Mitsubishi or a brand new Toyota or That's brand a new car. Surprise, that was brilliant. And the next, and then once they won, they got the right to pick the first fight. So the next one, it was another one where like they, they got like fifteen grand for the winner. Uh, 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 they were buzzing with the prizes, so the prizes can be got from top sponsorship, which I, I can I can do myself or link up with anyone to do. It, but I'd love to bring it back. I'd love that show to be in the UK, especially because I think having imagine having eight young hungry fighters even if one of them's had a couple of losses here or there living literally in a room this big with each other all week for six weeks no one they have to fight each other yeah it's going to create tension it does it does I, you can't I, help it near, it does you can't <laughs> help it someone's going to get on your nerves from the first day he was the kid that boxed over there banks he just told me he was just he was just weren't my cup of tea as always the total opposite he was like loud and arrogant but no not much substance to back it up yeah. what, what i felt and he just got on me nerves from the minute I seen him. I just told him, I'm gonna call you out. So I, I, I'll have to, because I just he was walking around talking because he beat a kid who was unbeaten at the time, and I was unbeaten. He was saying, I'm gonna get another all and all. And was, he got right in me head. But yeah, I'd love to see that show blow back. And then the uh, last one for you, Michael Rankin, best memory from the contender series. <laughs> probably probably meeting meeting Buddy McGate. He was a character and I ended up as soon as I was there, he was like, he trained the kids to fight me. He was in the opposite corner. Yeah. And yeah, he was laughing he, recently when we talk about it. He said, no, he said, I knew exactly what I was doing with you. I just want him to frustrate you. But um, I'd already got to meet Sugar Ray Leonard, who was like my idol growing up on the Contender UK against USA in Newcastle a few months earlier, about six months earlier. And the producer interviewed me and said, would you do the real one? I said, no, I couldn't live with anyone who's fighting me. I, I'd end up losing it. I, I can't like, it's not like I'm, gonna just snap at people and argue i don't want any confrontation at all but i know what i'm like around people if i don't like being around someone yeah especially if i'm gonna fight them i couldn't do it so no i definitely wouldn't and the bitch just went okay and then i got a phone call straight away once to do one. it <laughs> you'd see me fight you'd see me win so he said right do you want to come on the contender over here in in the us it was the same seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar first prize you get to go like you're in la you gotta be in la for like six or seven weeks and um most uh, who will do well and it will get a contact with them over there as well yeah. with the contenders so it made loads of sense to me um, but it's a great show and and, and yeah I, I didn't get on with that Banks at all so yeah I knew I'd end up fighting them and I did hopefully you can end up bringing it back but lad that, this has been great lad but I've I always it, say thanks. at the end lad tell everyone where to find your social medias lad and all that sort if you want to sh- you might not even have any sponsors left <laughs> no. but if you want to shout anyone and, out and, or and anything I, and I do now is, is is either for the lads or kids that I manage but my, my, my social media my Instagram and Twitter are Paul Smith Jr just 
that, that's it. At Paul Smith Junior. That's all I've really got on. I don't do Snapchat. That's for the young kids. Oh, it? lads, yeah. I haven't got a clue how to use Snapchat. Little girl, myself. I mean, a lad on Snapchat. I mean, my, little, my youngest is, is is seven. The, the twins are a bit older, they're 22, but they're um, they led to me if I was on if I was on Snapchat. When I get in bed of a night, Laura's just sitting there scrolling through TikTok. And I don't even oh, really understand how to I use it. I haven't got that. I've got I've got one, but I, I haven't got it and, I, and I, it's not on my phone. It's at least it's on I my do, phone. Yeah, it's hard work. I don't understand it, lad. I'm not I'm not I'm not down I'm with the kids pads. as they I'm, say, I'm, lad. I'm 40 now, I'm definitely I'm down bad with, with kids. technology. Lad, my manager is better at technology than I am, and he's like 40 <laughs> something. <laughs> know what I mean? My ma rings me all the time, lads. It's only me again. Sorry to bother you. And I go, go on what you want. And she go. This remote on the telly, right? <laughs> and, and, and I'm like curries, honestly. And she laughs and says, you know, you're me upline on it. And anything technical or computer or phone, she rings me. And like, my bird's got a degree in computers and never uses it. And I ask her and she's like, I haven't got a clue. And I'm trying to like oh, tell me my to fix I'm, things. But yeah, I'm the same. So, I'm two social medias I stick to, that. that's it really. I'm, 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 I'm in the middle of getting a YouTube channel going yeah. and do the odd chat like this here and there. But I think I'm just going to use it to call out all the bluffer trainers oh, on, on Instagram and great. just point them out sounds great to me that, 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 I'll, as well, I'll be getting involved in that defo call a few mushrooms out <laughs> boss but a uh, brilliant episode another one in the bank fellas I will see you next week my people